Okay, now we were discussing uh, structural a little bit before with the general timber frame. I've often mentioned to you for those in the CERT 4 classes and both in the diploma classes, how when you're getting into commercial buildings that the whole um, the whole design work of structural load changes significantly, purely because of the weight of the loads going off it. When you're going to even medium rise, which is how many floors? Seven, three to ten. Three, 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 to, ten. three to ten. Three to ten, spot on. So when you're talking about those additional heights and loads and that sort of thing, then obviously the framework's got to be structural. Now, you'll see, in, and we talk about the high rise to New York and all that sort of thing, high rise downtown, that steel construction is obviously comes more into the fore. Now what I've done is adapted in these sort of, um, uh, these situations in the residential build as well, is actually using steel construction to be able to create what's classed as a portal frame. Now the whole idea of that is down within that portal frame, as they do in a high rise, it's no different, it's the same principles applied, <coughs> that the actual weight that's going to be applied, in this case by the, um, uh, by the tile roof, is applied onto this beam, okay, that beam instead of going into trusses is now going into a, an SHS steel post and being transferred again down here to the, the footing, yes, yeah, correct. So by doing that, this now leaves this area here totally available just to be filled in, which is how the whole principle of the high rises in that work that the structural uh, steel components take the low weight, transfer it down, but it leaves these openings here, which now, what do you, what do you reckon I'll be putting in here? Windows. Massive big window, that's exactly what I'm doing. It's gonna be a bit of a garden out here, but there's gonna be a big glass pane sort of windows going in here. So that same structure allows me now to be able to do window size, the window spans that wouldn't normally be possible in a, uh, in a timber sort of situation. Uh, to be able to, sorry, no, that's okay. To be able to achieve that sort of same height, and you can see here, we're only talking about about a 250, 300 uh, sort of beam. To be able to do the same sort of spans going into timber is probably double the height. So what happens is it starts then to reduce our window heights, as well as work into our frame because we're probably sitting right into the external line of a truss here. Um, so we'd be punching up into the roof line as well. So when you're doing this sort of uh, structure, it can be adapted quite well. There's economics in it, but the main idea, again, uh, structure-wise, is that we have created a portal frame. So I always put those ones in mind. Uh, and you just allows you a little bit more flexibility in what you can do with your window sizes and that as a rule. Okay, now, you can see at this stage here, we've got uh, frames up, obviously trusses ready to be loaded, though some are gonna be changed in this back section here because all these, the steel work is going to be changed. But what I want to talk about is the planning and the general, um, yeah, planning of construction as you'd be doing a construction schedule for this. Okay, so to date, um, and think about these all as activities, because remember when we were doing our construction schedules, I talked about getting all the activities right. So what we're going to do is probably bring ourselves up to this sort of level. So feel random to, to start with it, but if you're doing a site like this and you're doing a construction schedule for it, what would be the very first thing you'd be looking at? And we're talking here on site, we're not talking about the office work and things like that. As a site construction, what would have to happen here first? Site prep. Site prep, yes. Bring in and leveling the site, correct. Okay. Next activity after that? Drainage. Drainage. And then you can obviously see the points here that have been put into it. Now, in putting in the drainage, you'll note that we've got points coming up through the slab as well. So obviously they had to come through. The same time as the drainage, what else would we have had to have here on site? Meter box. Meter box and you'll see... I can't remember what. So the meter box is down, yep, down there, so the meter box is in, so electrical rain's in. So virtually the main services of the site are, are here already. Uh, other services that would follow would be... Water, water. Water and... Yes. Gas, gas and no, sorry, just up there. The electric, oh, well, yeah, electric and electricity, but probably cabling, ambient, and that sort of thing. These days is pretty common to do that. So yeah, getting the services in, that's that main strategy right at the very first. Okay, so we've got our services in. We've got our drain points as we noted here, and the ones that are coming up through the slab. What's the next task? Excavation. Uh, we have pretty well leveled the site. Oh right, yeah, put it in Peg it, set it out, that's right. We need to get our, lo our lines in place because if that is a dimension from there to there, it must be pretty important that we've uh, given our, our concrete as something to work with. 
and you can see in here, just look over the side here, where you have our, uh, our rebate edge in there. So when they're setting up for this, they're working to the outside points, obviously, because that's going to be the outside walls. So again, keep that one in mind, because what could happen, what could change with this outside wall line here and the rebate? Instead of brickwork, it could be front timber or something else, yeah, in which case the rebates aren't, aren't mine. So always keep a, an eye for that, for the external cladding so the house have noted on it, because it will obviously change your rebates as you're going around. If you need a rick rebate, but you won't need that if you're going to put timber on the outside. So just a, a small thing. So we're, we're doing our set out with what do we usually use to establish our set out points? Hmm? Surveying. Surveying, yeah. Now we can have two ways we can do it here. We can do it ourselves or we can get a surveyor to come in. The surveyor would actually note the points there for us. We could do it ourselves by setting up. Laser and pegs. Hmm? Laser and pegs. Labourers and pegs, yeah, or hurdles and, and hurdles and go from there. So we set up our hurdles first um, and pin our points from, from the measurements as we did with no difference before with our, um, uh, probably using the site pegs and using the tape measures, either long or short tape measure to do it, to be able to get our points on our hurdles. We'd run our string line across and then we'd ping it or uh, uh, chalk it and get our pegs in so we get our points to work from. Now we can do that ourselves as a builder or we can get the surveyor in if we feel a little more comfortable with it. And these days they're asking for a bit more uh, certification on that. The point is you get your surveyor in, you will get a certified plan, you will get a certified set out plan, which is pretty good that way. Point being, or the uh, improvement on setting it up yourself in hurdles is that you can maintain those there and if things are getting knocked over by the bobcats and whatnot coming in there, then you always got those hurdles there as a permanent sort of marker. So, good way. So we've set it out. Uh, from set out, where will we go to from there? It's all in place. Lines are marked. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, okay. Locking for no, footings. Yeah, yeah. Um, we said excavation for footings. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll take that. In this case, uh, depending on the particular uh, site and the type of soil, uh, it might um, might require uh, additional footings. In this case, there were some footings out the front there because there's extra block work and that going on. So there were some additional footings there. Uh, so we've done the footings, we've trenched that out. Um, at this stage we should be ordering what? Trench mesh, trench mesh, trench mesh, trench mesh trench chairs. Chairs, okay. getting everything in place for the excavation yeah. and port. Rebars. Yep. Yeah, rebars and that sort of thing. So again, your materials have got to be lying on site. So when you're doing a project like this, it's no good having the materials turn up and not having your trades, trades turn up. Yeah. So again, we're talking about planning and scheduling and getting materials and trades on site important in that regards. Okay, so we've got our um, uh, we've got our particular um, uh, materials on that of the land there. Our trades have turned up. We've done our footings. Uh, what are we doing next after that? Termite protection. Termite protection. <coughs> that's right. If it's in a in a classified area, now there's two types of termite protection: type A and type B. Anybody tell me what type A is? Type A. Is uh, well, it could either be spray, I guess, or yeah. um, plastic underneath the actual... Uh, that's type B. Mesh. Type B. A is the mesh that goes around you. So where you have uh, protrusions coming up through the slab, that's your type A. Yeah. Okay, and type B, yeah, is you're going around through your wheel hole line, following your brick veneer, or um, uh, uh, your brick veneer, or treating it if there is timber um, uh, coming down that line as well. So we're talking about termite protection, which is now pretty well covered in the NCC and it's a section of, of its own. Um, we're talking about a number of different types of protection. You can go with the stainless steel mesh around the outside. There are chemicals that can go around the outside. And there's also barriers, barriers that can go around the outside, that's correct. Now, in, in some areas, and it's purely a cost uh, sort of thing, you'll notice on the edge of the slabs here, uh, we have a free form level of about 300 millimetres. Okay? If that distance from natural ground level is maintained, that's called a visual barrier. Okay, it means that the whole idea being is that if you have treated underneath and to be able to get into the house, the, um, uh, the termites would have to come up the side of the concrete into your weep holes in your brickwork and get into your house from there, that they then have, would have to build mounds to come, yeah, there be a subterranean, They'd have to come to the outside. The idea is then you would see the mounds and you would obviously spray them. Anyone want to remember the um, 
Uh, Pythagoras' theory. It's a three, four, five, isn't it? So what we can do in these sort of situations, three, four, five, is a bit of a quick check on whether the square or the formwork is set up. It's a quick one. Sometimes uh, you know you like to uh, trust your trace and everything's right, but it's a very quick one to check up. So three, four, five, meaning that if we measure three meters from this corner to that corner and four meters from that corner to that corner, we mark those two points and it should be five meters. So no matter by pure mathematics, we're always in a five. So if it's, if it's uh, um, uh, values of, of uh, three, so three becomes nine, four becomes 16, then five will become 25. So you can actually apply it to large sort of scales too. But we might do a quick check on that one, okay? So if um, we can get a, a line here, Somebody want to come and give me a, a point for three meters. Let's see each of that. <coughs> okay. yeah, three meters. Okay. Now, everyone take that along and give us another point there at four meters. <coughs> that outside edge. Our external timber framework and the brickwork following on the outside and the internal walls should always work into a, to a square point, which is pretty handy. Because obviously in this sort of level here being a display home, the finish would probably be tiles. In this case with modern porcelanic tiles, which are very, very square and note those sort of things you know, quite quite sharply. We feel confident that we've gone into a situation where we're going to have a nice, nice square room to tile off of. So that's just a little check using the old Pythagoras and Syrian but applying it to you know, sort of modern set outs. And that's a good way to quick check the formwork prior to or the concrete. Pouring the concrete, that's right. Okay, now we mentioned before we're, we're setting up our formwork, what we're what should be ordered and arriving on site then at that point of time? Concrete. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Mesh. Yeah. Mesh. Yeah. Yes, mesh. Chair, you say they all come to check or the council yeah. or they go to sign off and it's done your footing correctly. Uh, the building correctly. Right. Yeah, building really correctly. That should have been done. Your, your, uh, your mandatory inspections correct for your, for your footing work. Internal checks as well. Mm -hmm. Internal checks as well? Internal checks, that's right. We should be internally checking for the mandatory check that the guys going to make up. So one of those is the square, another one would be checking internal dimensions of, of the job and then what will we be checking inside, which will be inside the formwork. The trench mesh, the cages, spacing. the spacing. Spacing, that's right. And where are we going to get that information from? This one the putting the slab design. Yeah. It's this yeah. putting a slab design, that's right. Engineers putting foundation slab design, that's right. Because they've laid it out, they usually give you a pod layout. Obviously they'll give you a beam depths and separations. So the idea being that we check those things out prior to the building certified coming and checking up here. So internal check, then your main data check. So little things like that are pretty good. And once that's all okay and that's been approved, then we can go ahead and pour our slab. So we poured our slab. At that point of time, what should be starting to arrive on site? <coughs> Timber, yeah, yeah, should be a timber. In this case, you'll see a lot of these. Uh, this is all what we call in situ or stick timber frames, meaning the timber is delivered to site in either stud lengths or long lengths for the wall plates. Um, have the trusses going on there. So you'll see here the, the markings on the concrete work where the actual um, uh, the carpenter has gone out on site and he's marking out by the dimensions on the plans, he's marking out his internal rooms. So at this point in time, it's probably the best time when you find out whether your overalls are correct on that as well. You'd like to think your formwork was right in the first place, but here's a chance because uh, the carpenter will be checking his internal rooms for his uh, 90 mil studs. So he'll be able to give you a pretty good idea whether the room sites are working to that because he lays them out first before he starts building his framework. 